I'm excited for today's show. As you know, this week, like every week, well, the last three for sure, you've heard us talk about what's been going on in our country. <laughs> Race has become the number one issue. It wasn't impeachment, but that's by the clown that lives in the White House, hides behind his walls in his bunker that he says he just visits. We know that there's a lot going on. We have amazing actors and folks speaking out. They're being attacked by their friends on the right. Why? Because they stand for something, and they've dealt with this time and time again. Now, we've had Montel on our show this week. We had Eddie Clark on, who was a retired police officer who dealt with being a black police officer in the 80s. If you want to go back to that show, go back and hear what Eddie talks about. He apologized because he did not speak up in the 80s, and he hoped that he could be an act of change. But still, years later, we still deal with the same problems in this country. And now, more of us are speaking up than ever. Why the idiot tweets, we speak up, because he can only sit in his bunker and tweet in all caps. I don't care. I don't really like watching Law & Order, so why he keeps tweeting for me to watch freaking Law & Order? Unless one of my guys that we interview on this show ends up on Law & Order, I'm not going to watch Law & Order. Stop telling me to do that. Unless he's trying to say something else. But why are we taking advice from a guy who attacks generals? Oh yes, war heroes. Oh yeah, Colin Powell was a bad general. Okay. Uh, general Mattis was a bad general. He brought Marines home. I think that's the problem that we have in our country is we're too divided. So, I decided to bring on an amazing actor. You've seen him. He's part of Tyler Perry's show, Ruthless, part of his amazing network. So, I'm going to bring our friend on, Lenny Clark, and we're going to talk about a little bit of everything. We're going to talk about his show so you can make sure you're supporting it and watching it. And then we're going to give Lenny's opinion on what's going on. And boy, is there a lot to talk about. So, without further ado, let's bring our guest on to the show. Boop, 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 boop. And Lee, how you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Ah, you know, I'm fired up, my friend. There's a lot going on in our country. And part of me is really excited to see it because it's a movement that I feel, as an old white dude, has needed to be done for years, is that everybody... I mean, it's, it's confusing to me as a military guy because I've read the Constitution and it says something at the beginning like, we the people, all created equal. Mm. And, and growing up and, and having kids now, it really has come to light. I mean, I grew up in Orlando, Florida, just outside of Eatonville, Florida, which is the, one of the oldest black communities in America. Being in Florida, in Central Florida, we didn't see this Confederate flag crap that these yahoos fight for like it's still today. Uh, and, you yeah. know, I've... I've been around law enforcement when they've misbehaved with some passengers mm -hmm. who've been in my car. I've been pulled over because, you know, I was guilty of having black friends uh, in Northern California. Oh, wow. You know, that wonderful thing. You're like, dude, that's called every day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're like, yeah, that's normal. <laughs> Welcome. <Normalist. laughs> but, you know, <laughs> racism in our country is at an all-time high, and it starts almost at the highest level. I will say at the top level where mm -hmm. even today, this, you know, not today, but yesterday, Thursday, we had the president tweeting out that he was thankful for the National Guard for his walk through the park, but he mm. thanked the SS. And I, I guess he was talking about the Secret Service, but you would think there's never a time that it's okay to, to use the initials SS to describe anything, unless you're filling out a, 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 a roster for baseball, and SS stands for shortstop. But uh, <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't. So, Lenny... Let's jump into this. Obviously, you work for the great Tyler Perry. You're on, you know, Rufus. So, let's let's talk about. It. You're in New York City, right? That's where you're at, or are you? No, I, I was uh, two weeks ago. I moved to Atlanta. I'm closer to. Oh, in Atlanta. Where we shoot. Now. Oh, I, you know, I love Atlanta. And the Atlanta mayor, she's a badass. She's like my freaking spirit. Yeah, she animal. is. She's. Yeah. Ooh, her two weeks ago on yeah, TV. Something else. Oh. oh my gosh. So let's talk. Whenever about she speaks, I'm like. Yes, 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 and I'll do whatever yes, she and. says. Oh. I don't even care. <laughs> so what's it like? So what do you think? What's going on in Atlanta? Let's start with what Atlanta's like under these current conditions. Obviously, Atlanta is the, you know, to me, I agree with what the mayor said. Atlanta, to me, is a hotbed. you got to think about it. The great Dr. Martin Luther King is from there. A lot of the civil rights movement has come through Atlanta. I mean, you even look at the, mm -hmm. the rebuilding, and I don't want to call it, you know, gentrification or whatever the hell they call it, but, you know, transformation of so many local celebrities that Atlanta has, T.I., Ludacris, rebuilding a community that's amazing. Atlanta's one of my favorite cities in America to visit. But you see this division, and it's, I mean, what's your thoughts on this? Obviously, you're a black man, duh. 
But, uh, yeah. you know, what's your thoughts on what you're seeing out here? I mean, let's start with the good. It's Are you happy to time. see so many people standing up? Yeah, it's about time. It's about time. If it, if you gotta, I unfortunately have to crack some eggs to make an omelet, but like this is a long time coming and, you know, it's darkest before the dawn, but the dawn is on the way. And um, it's funny, I left New York right when the rioting and crazy protests started. So, you know, there were cop cars on fire outside of my apartment, not to um, uh, the day before we drove down. And then being here, I haven't seen firsthand how uh, things have been crazy. But what I do notice that was also happening in New York is that there's a lot of people, you know, forgetting about the coronavirus, you know, and not wearing, not taking precautions, which, you know, I'm like, how is this thing going to finally explode into the way and, 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 you know, have the light shine in so we can actually get somewhere from this chaotic space that we've been living in for the past, oh my gosh, three months, I guess. And then IE 400 years, like yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's bonkers. Yeah. But, um, I'd rather, I'd rather go through some turmoil to have change happen than sit in the same shitty space that we've been in since the start of this country, honestly. So, know? so let me ask you, that's a, that's a great topic. So <clears throat> for the first time ever, I can tell you, it's great to see so many people stand up for yes. what, what are Americans. I, I hate every, making everything a color thing, right? It feels weird being a Caucasian guy talking about it too. Trust me. <laughs> it's like this uncomfortable world to live in where you're like, I just don't want to offend anybody. Cause that's you can't happening. even say it. No, you I can't. Guess, like, but, it's so hard to even talk about. But I'm like, I'm comfortable. You're a black man. There's black women. That's Call the it hell what you it is. What yeah, it you is, right? You be uncomfortable talking about what's I, facts. I just like, feel stupid saying African-American because it's like, mm, who the hell goes around? <laughs> Irish-American, Italian-American. You sound stupid when you say that. You don't need to do... You're bored here. It doesn't matter what the color of your damn skin is. You should be treated right. Obviously, the yeah, black people you. in America have never been treated accordingly we, we dealt with the south yeah. so let's start with that you you're in the south and in the yes. last this last week the confederate flag has become what it finally has become is the enemy it stands for something yeah. that is hatred i don't give a sh i don't care what the it stands for standing up for whatever these i mean no, no I, I disagree yeah hold on yeah. let's let's no. read what a bumpkin told me our friend oh, this would be good Let, let's go with our bumpkin so I posted something, folks, yesterday or two, a couple days ago on my Facebook page, and I talked about the fact that our military bases, Army bases, by the way, the Marine Corps does not name our bases after anybody who loses. That's just stupid. Uh, but we shouldn't have our <laughs> Army bases, our almighty Army, named after generals who lost, trying to overthrow our country, our flag, and our president who was trying to abolish slavery. Oh, shocking. You know, the South, you know, you know, they'll rise again or whatever they believe. So I said... It's about time. Take this stupid rag down that it stands for losing. It's like it's like naming a yeah. base in Germany if you're in the German military after something Adolf yeah. Hitler or one of his loser-ass generals who killed three million people. Why would we do that? Well, I posted this, and I also gave some names of bases that we should run with. I put Colin Powell as one. I also called out mm. NASCAR for waiting till 2020 to ban the Confederate flag. I don't know what they were waiting for. Talk about jumping on the bandwagon. But this lovely, yeah. lovely, lovely human being wrote back to me, Eric, and he said, he said, Eric, I love the flag commonly referred to as the Confederate flag. Okay, well, he loves it. Oh, he gets better, though. I, should, I can't make this up. It's, I think it's beautiful. It certainly doesn't need to be banned. <laughs> also, wow. oh, this, gets, this, is, this is almost my favorite part. Also... Fighting for your home state in the war of northern aggression doesn't make you a racist. Whoa. Northern aggression? Oh, that's what you we're mean calling like, that. Uh, I, abolishing slavery, slavery and treating other human beings like human beings? That's, that's our aggression. That's yeah. so aggressive. Oh, con you know, spreading love and unity. We are, we're, that's so aggressive. No. Dumb. I'm sorry, dude. Whoever you're, you are, <laughs> you, you're... The truth needs to slap you into uh, sensibility. Someone needs to slap him. Wow. Someone got to wow. slap him. He go around <clears throat> saying that in person. He's yeah. not going to be Good a happy man. Good luck with man. that. Good exactly. With that. Good luck with that. Yeah, fun with guy. that. Uh, we'll be there with you, tough guy. <laughs> Keyboard commandos, right? Keyboard racists. And we're seeing a lot of that out there, right? I mean, yeah. there's more and more, not to take away from Black Lives Matter, but I've talked to more and more of my friends who are stepping up and standing out and standing on corners mm -hmm. and protesting and going in front of law enforcement and see the reaction they get for protesting this. 
You yeah. know, it's not just that people that go law enforcement. This isn't about just the police. This is about everything in our country, equality and everything. It pisses me yeah. off as a as a sports fan that people will cheer for LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. and, and for the most part, several years ago, people used to cheer, scream in the stands for number seven, Colin Kaepernick. Remember that? I mean, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude went to a Super Bowl and he was a freaking hero, right? Yeah. He was the great But Colin the second Kaepernick. you speak out, the second you say something about the injustices your people face, you're an enemy somehow. What? How does that make any sense? Oh, you're you're cool, but as soon as you start saying how proud of you, you know, how proud of your blackness you are, or how much you want your people to not be subjugated to BS, oh, now you're oh no no no, we can't support that. That's no. what? That's insanity. Yep. Definition of insanity. Yep. That's but, ridiculous. But that's yeah. what, but Liddy, that's what so far I've seen. I mean, I was reading an article just this week. They apparently have released this. One of the four officers in Minneapolis was released on bail, uh, and his attorney what? spoke out. Oh yeah, he's out. Shocking. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, look, this. What done. was his bail set? I know. I know. One the million. Guy was what, like one million. million. The, wait, the biggest one? Was all the, the all one? of them. They all. They all had one million. So he's yep. He's wow. out. He's out, and his attorney is speaking out, and he is using. Mind you, there's two white guys and like an Asian dude and some other dude that are involved out of the yeah. four. Well, this is the other mm -hmm. white dude, the young dude, four days on the job. He is using his inexperience as his excuse, as excuse? for what happened. And I'm like, bullshit, you know that man is saying I can't breathe. We've all watched the video. Sorry, my friend, you don't. I mean, to even give people like this bail is bullshit. I mean, let's just let's just call Thank it you. like it is. Yeah. Let's just call yeah. it like it is. And the fact that then in the same as soon time. As I saw that bail, yeah. I was like, he's going to get, someone's oh, going to get him out. No, they're going to get him out. Fuck. Somebody's, you know, probably with the Trump administration. They're like, here you go. Get out. Be yeah, fine. You know, easy. I, Million dollars, that's it? That's it? I mean, the dude doesn't do that. He killed a man. Right. He killed a yeah. man. And, and still, here we are, another day. Uh, and let's talk. I mean, this is no disrespect to the, the Floyd family. Breonna Taylor's killer still roam the streets, not even locked up. Yeah. Right? Right. We have this going on throughout our country. And I, and I bring that up. And I didn't even know who Breonna Taylor was until that came up. And I know in Georgia, I mean, you just yeah. recently moved there. But we all know what happened in Brunswick, Georgia. Back in February, with probably the most racist town in the South I've ever seen an interview done, because they're interviewing black people and they're people ducking and shit. Like, I don't want people to see me on camera because, like, I'm afraid to walk down the street because of how the people, how racist they are here. And they want us to be like, well, you know, he was suspicious. He was, he was what? He was a black guy jogging? That's suspicious. That's so suspicious. That's, yeah. I'm like, shit, the, I hate to see how they treat the New York ridiculous. Marathon. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you're going to go after people jogging? And I've watched that footage. So, you know, here we are in America. And now you are on BET, right? You're an actor on BET, which has always been great, you know, because MTV stopped playing music a long time ago. So if you want to get, you know, <laughs> good music, you got it, you know, BET. And you work with, you know, Tyler Perry, who he makes sure. amazing movies. So, I mean, tell me what it's like in this atmosphere for you. Like going back, obviously you survived COVID. And now yeah. you're going in and you guys are going to resume filming soon. And this is going to be... Yeah. It's an issue you can't ignore. Obviously, t Tyler is, uh, you know, he speaks out. He speaks his mind. Uh, and I'm sure you do, too. I mean, let's get to the nitty-gritty here. I mean, how, how's, I mean how, how do we go forward? Is this something that we should all be speaking out about? Yeah. I mean, we look at the great writers. I think so. Who are we talking yeah. about anti-racist, right? We need to be having these conversations. We need yeah. to be having these conversations. These uncomfortable conversations need to happen. And there needs to be civility. We need... That that's like front and center, compassion, patience, and a willingness to change, a willingness to see the flaws and all, and correct yourself. Like you, you, if if at your base you truly believe that your racist ways are the right way to go, justice is gonna have to knock some sense into you. There's no other way. You're on the wrong side of the wave, and the wave is justice. So you could, you could, you know, get yourself mowed over, which I don't recommend because there's an easier way, and it's finding compassion, which all human beings have. You just you bury it away in your nonsense. You bury it away in your pride and your this nonsense of superiority. No one is superior to anyone. Period. And the fact that you want to have that kind of concept going on in your mind shows a weakness of something that you're not addressing within yourself. It has nothing to do with the next person. It's all your own shit. 
So if you're not willing to look in the mirror and be like, wait a second, what the hell's wrong with me? We're not going to be able to get past this nonsense. And you're just going to keep getting slapped upside your head until you take in the real. And the real is we all need each other. We all are here for each other. So if we can't pour into that shit, we're going to have a terrible existence. Yeah. Period. You uh, know what I mean? Oh, I, I love and, it. Uh, yeah, Tyler is springboarding that. Tyler yeah. is like, they have a comprehensive plan to, to continue shooting. He he gives the underdogs chances. Like, I, this is the biggest role I have in my life. Like, I've never felt more taken care of in that, in his company, on that production than, I mean, it rivals my family. You know what I mean? And if that, that just means to me they are family because they look out for each other like family would. And I'm like, why can't we have this just universally? Why is that so hard? You know what I mean? Because it doesn't seem hard to me. It may be, you know, step by step, maybe complicated, but I, I'll take some complications for more love. Yeah. Any freaking day, any day. You know I, what I mean? And I agree with yeah. you. I mean, we've seen what we've seen, which I think is hilarious, is so many people. <clears throat> angry at the Black Lives Matters movement, right? Because, you know, there's yeah. white people out there. Why aren't the white people saying all, all lives matter? And we're like, well, our lives are fine. Yes, well, no shit. That's like a broad statement, all lives matter. Well, okay, duh. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you need a hashtag to be told, that, it's like being told to wash your hands, right? Or cover yeah. your face what? when you cough. Those are three things. Why? What? Yeah, this is like, <laughs> like, like, like all lives matter? Well, no shit. Thanks for the broad statement. Yep, that's, yeah. that's, uh, okay. Thank you. I don't need a hashtag behind that. But Seriously. where do you see this? I mean, we've seen we've seen sports guys fired. Uh, Grant Napier in Sacramento, he got snarky with Demarcus Cousins, who used to be a Sacramento King, and they have they have a history of not liking each other. And you know, he came back because Demarcus came back and said, you know, Black Lives Matter. And Grant Napier came back with All Lives Matter. Don't just make it what. And Grant didn't understand uh -huh. why he got fired. A lot of us were like, dude, dumb timing. Bad, stupid statement. Yeah. You know, how many years have gone by with, you know, our brothers and sisters in the black community being harassed by police, not getting paid equal to yeah. what their own are doing? I mean, I mean, if you look at the culture of the white folk, we don't even treat our women the right way. We don't even pay them equal to mm. us. I mean, mm. so we well, think we're going to let somebody else in here? The other day. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> we barely give a shit about our, by our own. Like, it took people speaking out and writing books. And now it took yeah. George Floyd losing his life for people to wake up. And why it is sad for George to lose his life, I think it's a beautiful thing to see so many people. When I was standing just two days ago, three days ago now, on a street corner with my sign, and I got heckled by stupid people driving by. You know, it was the dumbest statement. Get a job. Shove your sign up your butt. You know, I'm like, get a job, bro. I'm working right now. I own my own business. I got a whole bunch of employees. Don't worry about it. They good. It's called remote working, wow. stupid. It's called COVID-19. Why don't would you mm. just drive by to say hateful stuff in front of young children? Because this was a peaceful protest. And what do you get from that? What does that do for you? How uh, does hate help you in any freaking way? It you makes know what I mean? Good. I hate working out, and yeah. I have to do it. But <laughs> I hate it. That's the only time hate that I put. If the, the, my frustration for it right. compels me through the exercise. And then, oh, guess what? I, there's a euphoric feeling that washes over me right. because I need to work out. But you spewing that nonsense towards someone else. Now you're making someone else pay from your own insecurity and yep. inadequacy. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, what? But that's, <laughs> but that's what they do. It's just, it's just this it's this hatred. And I mean, I wish there was a yeah. way to fix it. I mean, we have TV, which is supposed to talk about these things, but everything's slanted, right? I mean, yeah, people exactly. are di are divided. They're divided about a Confederate flag. Like, give me a break. Like, how are we divided about that? You lost. You don't get your flag doesn't get the rise again. Ever, yes. period. You lost. We don't recognize that. You have a yeah. problem that we recognize race has issues in our country and we need to be united because yeah. we truly are. That's why I love seeing these streets. I love seeing the street painted Black Lives Matter in D.C. Yeah, right across amazing. the street. I mean, that's beautiful. And yeah. It's good to see cities doing it across the country. And I love that because we need to do that because it sucks that it's 700 years. It took 700 yeah. years. But at least something's happening. And we've seen this through the years and watching it, you know, mine's all documentary based, right? I like, I'm like stunned by seeing it. I wasn't alive in the '60s. I, you know, I've studied Martin Luther King. I was made fun of in high school for reading about Malcolm X and geeking out on understanding Malcolm. Maybe a little bit because Denzel. Like, who doesn't love Denzel? I mean, come on. It's oh my gosh! Listen, he killed that role, by the way. Sad to say, like he became Malcolm X. Yeah. For not. Oh. <laughs> 
Like I watched yeah. a documentary on Malcolm on on HBO, and the whole time I'm like, damn, wow. that's Malcolm, but he looks like Denzel. But wait a minute, that was yeah. Denzel. I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but yeah. I mean, Will Smith did the same thing with Ali, right? I mean, I mean, if you think yeah. about it, Will Smith looked a lot like Ali too. He really he did. embraced yeah. the character. But I mean, yeah. Denzel's one of those out. I mean, but Denzel's had roles like Glory, right? I mean, yeah, the most spoken with the, his career, with his platform. Yeah, I mean, he won. He got uh, he got an Oscar for the the scene where he was with, for where yeah. he cried. I mean, probably mm -hmm. one of the most intense scenes. And I was like this tall, Ooh. this tall when I saw. I that. remember that was the first time I bawled during a movie. I think seeing that, like, yeah. I was like, I was, I was my young self. Like, what is happening? This is, this is wrong. What the hell? Yeah. I and mean, the look on his face. And I just wanted to save him so badly. Yeah, that, oh my gosh. So and then powerful. you think about the time frame of when that was, and then you look, we're in 2020. And right, and, and we're making change. And I mean, you probably, you, not probably, you, you face way more racism than I ever have in my entire life, and you're probably much younger than me. And that speaks volumes for the fact that that's, that makes me very upset. Uh, and mm -hmm. and I, know, I know I told you before, but we both watched President Obama uh, speak, I think it was mm -hmm. about a week ago. And yeah. you didn't see it, but I did. I, I unfortunately made the mistake <clears throat> of, going to <clears throat> of watching it live and reading the comments. Uh, I, mm. I think it was like one of the networks had it on. Uh, don't worry, it wasn't Fox News. Uh, it was something else. But I was watching it, <laughs> and I was, it was the first time in my life I, I said something. And I've never said I'm not proud to be an American because I serve my country. And I, I'm a Marine, and I love America. And I've yeah. served with so many amazing folks that I just absolutely love them. And I don't even look at them for anything other than they're Marines. But when I'm sitting mm. here, I was never so embarrassed to be a white person. And I'm mm. telling you this because I want you to tell me either I was dead wrong or I was confused. I was embarrassed. I sat here at my computer, literally looking at a screen. I don't know why I'm like treating you like you're my priest and telling you my, my white woes, but here we go. Hey, you got doing. the right one. Yeah, you got the right guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, so I'm sitting here and I'm like, what the hell? There's people going on there going, he's not my president. Oh, he's Call him Barack Obama. He's not president. And I'm like... I'm typing okay. back, y'all know once you earn a title president, it's like title Marine. I'm never going to mm, lose it. You're like, a Marine. Like, yeah. you're not going to take, take my title away from me. You want to take it from, wow. a, you're going to have a bad, you're going to have a bad day. Yes, I'm old. I still know how to use my friends. I mean, I'm inked yeah. up for a reason. No, but I mean, I saw the racism <laughs> and then the comments about the man's wife and then the color of his skin. And they're all yelling the same thing. They're all the same person in common. They're all saying Trump 2020. And it just irked me because here we are. Yeah. We've got cities and embers. We've got, you know, besides George Floyd, the list is gigantic. You know, we've got Breonna yeah. Taylor's killer still, probably still walking the streets. But hey, this week we still have people pissed off because cops got taken off the air. Oh, and Live PD doesn't know why it got taken off the air. Oh, maybe because they have footage of a black man saying, I can't breathe on the ground in 2019. Yep. Oh, and, and the footage, and, and the, the footage strangely has been destroyed. Destroyed? Come on, guys. This is how insidious like the the road that the American slavery has literally created all this nonsense that we're in and how insidious it was. They took slavery that wasn't as ridiculously psychologically, you know, uh, generationally destructive and they made it that and now we're living in the symptoms of it. So for you to feel like that, read in the comment section, that's the kind of compassion that is going to pull us out of this shit. That's the kind of feeling that needs to be had for all these knuckleheads saying Trump 2020 and all that other nonsense, not my president, blah, blah, blah. Like the, it's, it's so easy to be divisive. It's so easy to be negative. It takes a strong and courageous heart to tell the truth, to be positive, to lift others up. It takes actual work. Anyone can say, oh, you know, you this, you that, and call and name call. Anyone can say it. Kids are the best at it. You know what I mean? And they probably learned it from, you know, from watching adults be re not being held accountable for what they say and think. You know what I mean? Like we're in a time now where you, you can't just exist and treat life like it's an accident. No, you have to you're going to have to make moves. Yeah. And if you're smart and aware and your heart is like in the right place, I'm going to call it the right place. You'll see what side of history you should be on. And it is the side of justice. It is the side of truth. And truth is the only constant thing. So you can run all you want from it, but uh, uh, every dog has his day, baby. Yeah. You know? and, and we'll track it out. I mean, nowadays, that's what, that's what it's <laughs> yeah, at. We're at that point where we're, we're no longer, 
we have platforms. Hey, I have one, and I'm damn proud of this show because this show. I mean, just the other day, our staff got attacked for diversity. Some clown went on and attacked one of my producers and co-hosts. It said you don't have enough diversity, and we're laughing. I'm like, uh, Montel was just on like yesterday, day before was Eddie yeah. Clark. And I've had the Marine rapper TMR and Space Force, which are three brothers that have been on my show countless times. We're all Marines, well, we're all vets. Uh, yeah. TMR's a Marine, <clears throat> I, and not that I'm going around like it made me feel bad because I'm like telling my team, I'm like, because they're like, let's respond, and I'm like. No, I make fun of people who go around telling me how many Asian, black, freaking gay, lesbian, transgender friends they have because I don't yeah. look at my friends by their... Nope, nobody does. Ooh, 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 if you don't yeah. look that way. Does that mean I don't... No, no, no. That means I support what's going on right now. I support Black Lives Matter because it does. Because why yeah. for 700 years has it gone ignored? Why do we not give a shit? Why do we still elect people who don't talk about it? Because we have dinosaurs who sit in D.C. And here I am, an old yes. white guy who's pissed off about it because I got kids who don't look this way, see this way feel this way. Mm. They weren't raised that way. And I'm sick of the excuse, I was raised racist. You know, I can't help it. I'm like, you can't, can't fix your shit. Help it. <clears throat> you never tried. You <laughs> never tried. You were never tried. You never tried and you will never try. No, I That's won't. Yeah. Uh, it's just, yeah. you laugh when you see some of, like, I don't even, like, I chuckle when I hear some of the stupid comments that come out to almost recognize racism in the country. Like, I didn't know people won't go see movies. Like, I've read, read, Mm. People won't go see movies, watch shows. People, ha I've read comments, even BET is a victim of this, where people want to block it from their, how do I block it? I'm like, holy crap. You know what <laughs> your ass has to be to call call Comcast and be like, eh, I don't want Univision, and I don't want BET on my TV. Get them people wow. over here, right? You got to be like, wow. you're flying the Confederate flag in your yard for sure. You're probably married to your cousin, so, you know, you know that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the South, right? I mean. But, you know, uh, so I don't mean to go off on this tangent with you, my friend. I know I we're just in an interesting time. And this is why I want yeah. this dialogue, right? Because I think so many people yeah. look for a light, for somebody to have a difficult conversation. And we see so much of it, yeah. right? So let's talk. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about your show before we go. And I, you got some good time? We're not, I'm not taking too much time. Oh, yeah, no, we're, okay, cool. we're good. So We can go all day, man. I'm loving this. So I, I love this topic, this, as you can tell. Yeah, come on. A guy with a goose shirt on is having a yes, great conversation. Yes, you got the goose on the shirt. The goose. Uh, <laughs> so, so let's talk about this. There's been a lot of talk of the difference between protesters, rioters, and looters. And, and I don't get this whole difference why we need to consistently have this argument. But there's a big difference between peaceful protesters and people mm -hmm. who are looting and breaking shit, criminal acts. There's a big yeah. There's a big difference. And, nobody's, and people are like, well, Black Lives Matter is behind that. I'm like... Are we? I'm like, really? Are, are you we, sure? Are they? Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you? Are you? You're just following, you know, the the leader, <laughs> and not really doing the homework. It's unfortunate yeah. that there are people taken away from the movement with the nonsense. Yeah. But we can't. We seriously, you you can't just all of a sudden. Oh well, I was gonna, I was gonna, you know, support you guys, <laughs> but the looters changed my mind. No, that's irresponsible. That's yeah. irresponsible. Really? Yeah. Oh, you, the looters change your mind? Well, that's enough for you to not jump on this cause that's saving people's fucking lives? Like, yeah. what? You know what I mean? Property is more important than bodies. Always. Go, see, there you go. That's yeah. a, that's. Whoa, you need to be checked on that. What? Because yeah. people Cause, don't get it. They don't understand. I mean, it's the same people who are pissed that the flag, the Confederate flag's gone. These are the people who are pissed that we're asking for statues to be dropped. I mean, we live in a time which I've never thought in my life that we would live in, but we've got generals, we've got generals being attacked. We've got people, yeah. we have peaceful protesters being gassed across the street from the White House. Yeah. There's no other way to put that. We've, we've all seen it, and we've got every creed and color standing on these lines protesting, and yet people want to tell yeah. us we're wrong, and people are singling out, oh, uh, 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 look, those white people, why are they doing it? They have a motive. Oh, did you say something racist? Hey, I'll be the first person, and I said it on my show, and I'll say it again. I've made, I've made stupid statements in my past life years ago. They yeah. were wrong. I'm the first person, and I've apologized for my actions. But the one thing I'm not yeah. going to do is be held against stupid shit I said a long time ago. I'll own it, but I'll fall on my sword now and stand there like I did just yeah. the other day, and I'll continue doing it. I'll continue having this show with guests like you and Montel to continue coming on our show until we fix this effing problem because it's not going to go away. It's not going to be swept under the rug. 
Mm-hmm. It's a problem. We got to face it head on. Yeah. And we've ignored it for head far on. too many years because you see it. Yeah. Where people judge Tyler Perry or anybody, and it becomes judged off of yeah. always followed by a skin color, and it's it, it's an issue. Yeah. It, and it's a huge issue. It's I mean, so easy to do. Yeah. It's been it it's been taught for so long that it's become a disease and a disorder that you people will fight to the death to defend it. That's crazy yeah. to me. Fight to the death to defend your racist and and divisive ways. I what? That doesn't make if if we're not fighting for unification, I don't think that's a fight worth having. Seriously, because my life is tremendously better when I place myself in a position to help others free themselves. Like having Tyler, Tyler helped me free myself with this role that I have, and now I'm like, oh my gosh, now I'm in another stratosphere, and I'm like. I don't need that much. I'm a minimalist. I went to to India and studied yoga for uh, a, a month, and come. Compl- I came back to New York. I was like, I can't live here anymore. This is <laughs> this is too much for me. But and then I realized like I don't need much. But I feel like in my lifetime, if I'm lucky and fortunate, I'm gonna have a lot more than I ever would need. So I need to be able to put other people in places that they can free themselves. Because I can't be the only one feeling like this. This is not fair. You know what I mean? I, there's no reason. So now I'm like, I want my version of what Tyler has. He roots and goes for the underdog, gives people a chance, and allows them to spread their wings. And my dude, I am, I am flapping away right now, and I have, I'm, I'm, I'm sending the ladder down so people can come through and join me. They can't be here up here by myself. My life is not worth shit if I'm not hooking my people up. You know what I mean? I love it. So let's go. You know? Oh, I, I love that you said that because I'm a big advocate of you. When you reach a certain plateau, you send the you send the, the rope back down, the, la- the elevator back down, or whatever escalator, elevator, rope, whatever the hell you have, you send it down yep. so people have a chance to come <laughs> back. back. You know, you just want people to be where you're at, and I think we need more like thinkers yeah. to that instead of okay. everybody's always divide and conquer, and that doesn't do anything. We have to be yeah. united, and yeah, there's a lot of bad things in our history. Now you are you're an actor, so I'm going to ask you the question. Sure. There's been some. There's been movies removed from streaming. Some of them are considered classics. Uh, let's talk about Gone with the Wind. We're talking about why we're picking on the South. Now, Gone with the Wind to mm. me seems to be interesting, and I actually disagree with that particular movie being removed. Yes, it's got yeah. it, it's got racism in, but two of the actresses are still alive. Do you know? Uh, wow. One of them is 104. I forget her name. Unfortunately, her name is uh, you know, it's a problem with doing this without having my notes. Uh, the actress, she turns 104 July 1st. So, wow. You know, and she's one of the black actresses in the movie, so one of the oldest. She's not the one who won the Oscar, was she? Yeah, she is. So Hattie? She, yeah, she's yeah. Hattie, still alive. Yeah, you're right. So she's still alive. Wow. 104. I mean, they take this movie off, which I think it has so much history behind it. Now, I get Django. Okay, Django. <laughs> <laughs> Jaco was yeah, that's just that was like an uh, n-word fest that, that I was like was obsession yeah. with oh, yeah, with well, race he, and, and that yeah. word and the word and the n-word. Oh my god, <laughs> he like it, you know, and I'm a huge Tarantino fan. I love his movies. I yeah, think he's an amazing too. director. But Jaco was very hard for me to stomach. I mean, don't mind the yeah, effort. Obviously, I was in the military. And Samuel, you can't watch a Samuel. I think the only movie Samuel L's ever been in that he doesn't drop it is like Star Wars. Where he's not like, uh, yeah, that's it. That right? is it. I yeah. wanted to see him jump, mother effer. You know, come me. It would have made it better, right? But you know, you look, yeah. So they see Django, and I kind of go, okay. That movie made me uncomfortable because, you know, hearing Leonardo DiCaprio, who I think is an amazing actor, and hearing you know even Don Johnson use this word, <clears throat> that to me is, you know, it's a word that we don't use. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. you want to get your teeth kicked in, go ahead, use it. I mean, but my son, asks, he's a diehard <laughs> music fiend. Like his dad, so he mm, listens to music. And it's I, all in. You know, he right. likes, like, he hears me listen to Mob Deep. I mean, I'm aging myself yeah. here. Like, Mob Deep, I was raised on Run DMC. The Beastie Boys were obviously a white guy. But no, the Beastie Boys, you know, Def <laughs> Jam, you know, LL. I mean, you listen to any rap music, and I get that's, it's rap music. It's not my thing, right? But, I mean, it's my music, but I don't get it. But I understand where it comes from because... The way hip hop was created in the urban sprawls, it's much like the NBA, right? It's created yeah. in a different field where you talk about controversy, you talk about your problems by singing instead of getting in trouble. You put this together with rhythm and mm-hmm. lyrics and shit that we've all never heard before and really brought it out to most of the Caucasian race out in the suburbs who were like, what? Cause, yeah. I mean, even the Beastie Boys were controversial, right? They're like, yeah. what are three Jewish kids 
white Jewish kids rapping about <laughs> with like Run DMC. What's those guys, right? And you look at it, yeah. and then you see music go up. So I laugh because my kid's thirteen, and you know he's listening to Beastie Boys. He's talking. He's asking me questions. It goes back to '96, talking about Pac and Biggie, right? And mm-hmm. you know those are those are weird conversations to have with your kid, where you're just like, you know. Yeah. To me, like Puck was my music. I mean, you know, the dude was yeah. a, he was a poet. He was he's an artist of his times. I mean, what he talked about, I mean, if Puck was alive today, I just said this to a buddy of mine. I was like, could you imagine if he was alive today? Holy crap. That man would be as radical as he was, <laughs> man. <laughs> listen. <laughs> that dude would have been trying to try to climb in a wall at the White House. He was gonna go whoop somebody's yeah, ass. You know that. He, <laughs> he might have been, been dropped from a musical, a halo <laughs> mission, dropped from the sky. You know he would have been. He would have been like, "What? Yeah. <laughs> Where's he at? Come here in your rose garden, telling me you want to you want to go for a walk and hold a Bible in your hand, you fake ass." Oh my oh, god! Oh man! Yeah. But, I mean, but that's Seriously. what we live in. So I mean, let me ask you this. And this is it deals with music. Mm-hmm. I love music, and I ask a lot of our guests on our show. You think music has a lot that helps us get through a lot of our, our trying times? I think music unifies oh, us. Oh, absolutely! Music is a is a release. Music is a, is a stress valve. It's like. You know, you're about to blow up. You put on a certain song, and it oh, it calms the beast inside. And it, the the beast inside wouldn't be such a beast if the atrocities that humans seem to love to do to each other weren't constantly happening. You know what I mean? So it's like a, it's a it's a double edged sword. It's, you know, Cats twenty two kind of thing. Like we need music for releasing, but you know. Why do we need to release? Yeah, because people are wilding out on each other. You know what I mean? So it's like, <laughs> damn, we wouldn't have all this great music if it wasn't for these, if it wasn't for this, you know, people being held down. But I, I challenge that though at yeah. the same time because I feel like humans can exist in a kind of utopia if we decide the yang of the yin or the yin of the yang, the, the negative side. We decide what that is. We can decide how bad the bad gets. We could possibly before this planet, you know, kills us all off. We could explore the universe. We could. We could develop technology to do all this. I think there's there's no such thing as impossible with human beings. We just haven't decided and discovered it yet. But we have to let go of all this BS that's keeping us divided, keeping us from unlocking how beautiful our minds are. And yeah, it's yeah. it's it, and music is one of the one of the one of the beautiful things that come from our experience. So yeah, it's we need it. We need I, I, it. I love music. Because to me, music gets us through these dark times. You're right about if the planet doesn't kill us, I think we'll probably kill ourselves. The fact that I read yeah. that somebody who's in the White House currently wants us to land, be on the moon, and be colonized by 2024, that's the dumbest thing I've heard Shut in a long time. Up. What is that? Why would you? Why? What the heck? We haven't even figured shit out here yet. What do you no. want to You want to go somewhere else and spread our nonsense over there? Oh, no, son. We're wilding out. <laughs> we can, well, I mean, and I say we, but I think for the first time that I. I've seen more unity than I've ever seen in my life uh, in the last yeah, few weeks. True. I mean, yeah. th- there is everybody's standing up for each other now, uh, for the most part, except for people who wear red mega hats. They seem to just live in this blinders. Yeah, on, or like, that's yeah. the perfect way to put it. They're like this and they're like that. And I don't get and it. I mean, and, but their mouths are not covered, so they're just. Bah, 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 bah. It's just weird because we talked about you know the uh, mayor of Atlanta at the start of the show, mm-hmm. and, you know, and so and I'm a huge fan of hers. Uh, and, and when she got up and said it, it cracked me up as a father, just listening to her as a mother, which she's like, the first thing I did when I heard this was happening, she's like, as you all know, I have a 19-year-old son, and I called his ass up. I said, boy, where are you at? And he said, I'm out. She said, get your black ass home. You do not belong out tonight. And I started laughing because she became so normal, right? But what did people turn around and do? They became hateful and said, ooh, mm-hmm. she's running for office. She's, I'm like, no, that was a mama comment. That was a... Yeah. That was a mom who knows. I mean, Magic Johnson said it best the day before she said that. Magic Johnson said, everybody knows who I am in L.A. I'm Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. He said, but nobody knows my kids. And he says his boys get pulled over. His boys, his sons. The great Magic Johnson, the, one of the greatest basketball players of our time. Ever. Dude crossed yeah. so many lines. And him and Larry Bird, right? I mean, remember how that caused controversy? Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Larry Bird, it was like, and it wasn't even a black or white thing. It was two amazing basketball players who loved each other. Phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, you saw yeah. it in Last Dance with Jordan oh and Magic and, and mm-hmm. Bird playing around with each other. Like, I mean, that's why I love Hoop, because Hoop truly unifies that. It's great to see LeBron. Yes. And then, yeah. I don't know if you're a Dame It just makes fan. you happy. Yeah, but did you listen to Dame? I don't know if you follow Dame Lillard. If you're not, I'm a, I'll slack it to you. I'll put it in your Skype yeah. after this. Dame Lillard from the Portland yeah. Trailblazers dropped this just... Freaking 
oh my lord, I don't even know what to call it besides heat. This rat mm. is just just talking about what's going on in our country, and it's good because I love the NBA because you got guys like Steve Kerr speaking up, and you know the NBA's always been like we're going to talk about the things that make Americans uncomfortable. We're going to talk about mm. it because you know you got to think about basketball; it's crossed all lines, right? It went from an all white sport. And now it's mm-hmm. like, you don't even look at that. We got dudes from other countries like Dirk Nagowski and uh, <clears throat> that young kid, Luka Donick. And, exactly. You know, you've got... And a, we got women in the game now. You know what I mean? Like Badass we, chicks. We, oh, yeah. Exactly. Killing it. Oh. You destroy me. Oh. Any Sabrina. Day. I can oh, never say day. Sabrina's last name. She was just drafted in the... She was the first pick by the, the New York Liberty. That The girl who went to, uh, to Oregon and she was mentored by Kobe... That girl got the mama mentality. Like she owns the NCAA record for both men and women for scoring. Yeah. Uh, I don't, what? Yeah. That's amazing. See, see, yeah. why would you want to limit anything? Like, I want to see excellence in my lifetime. All colors, all versions, human excellence. That's all I'm interested in. But people, this yeah. other nonsense is such a distraction because I have we have unlocking to do. We need to unlock this. This magnificent thing called the human body, human spirit, human mind. We need to unlock it. Now, we're, we are beautiful crazy. people. We are beautiful people that spend too much time pointing fingers and wanting what other people have or destroying what other people have because yeah. how dare they work hard and get it. And, and I know that comes from everything, man. So yeah. before we go, let's let's talk to you about your show. Let's, let's kind of decompress sure. it. Let's, yeah, this whole, we're going in. <laughs> we're going in over here. You're over here like, damn, I didn't know when I signed up to go on this show. I was signing up to freaking – we we gotta I go. Needed this. Uh, I needed this. Oh my gosh, I needed this. I, you Oof. know, you know, I'm gonna get your number now. You know, I'll be like, hey, can I vent? I got a vent. I, hey. I, I, I need to vent. By all means, I got you. <laughs> you on. We need a vent. Let's go. We need a vent. I mean, we need to. I mean, it's just, it's like every week. I feel almost every day I have to vent. I mean, it's just so. Mm. Sometimes it's hard, man. But let's talk about your show. Yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. you're on Rufus, uh, so that's you know. Yes, sir. Pretty badass. What's interesting about this show is that. I am the opposite of my character. I am my. I play this guy named Daikon Wright, who is the general of the compound. He's the right hand man to the leader, and I am like the name says. I am the most. I'm a bastard on this show. Oh my gosh! Like if if which <laughs> I'm I'm gonna say our leaders influenced a lot of the energy I put into this character because I'm a peace loving person. But this guy Daikon, my goodness, you love. You hate to love him and love to hate him. Like it's, yeah, it's one of those. Yeah. It's he's like the Joker. He's like the Joker. He, oh, he's like if if um if Morpheus was as evil or was evil like Agent Smith in the Matrix. He is Morpheus, the evil version, walking around with his hands behind his back, dressed in all black, constantly in everybody's business, constantly checking people and constantly trying to take somebody down. Craziness, yeah. So, Too so, much fun. So how do you prepare for this? I mean, besides probably just reading the president's tweet every morning, uh, how do, <laughs> do you just mimic him? Do yeah. you, just, you just walk around and go, if I was in the Trump administration, I would behave this way. No, just kidding. Uh, I mean, how do you prepare for a role like that? You seem like, I mean, number one, talked about going to India and studying yoga. Clearly, you yeah. you understand what's going on in the world. And you have grass. How do you channel somebody who's, pull, I mean, I ask of any actor of this, how do you go from what you clearly are as a great dude who's fun to talk to, smile, you can see you're very authentic and stand behind what you believe. How do you become somebody that's basically evil? I mean, that's hard. It's got to be hard on your brain yeah. to switch from good to evil. It's I, I look at it in the sense of people who do dastardly things, do terrible things, don't think they're being criminals. Don't think they're being terrible. They don't see themselves as being wrong or, or being evil. So he's just operating on his belief system. And unfortunately, his belief system is so skewed and so disastrous that he allows himself to risk, to act the way he acts. Um, so I, I just, I let the, the evidence, everything you need to know as an actor is right there on the page. It's right there on the page. And it's, you're, you're the biggest question to ask yourself anytime you're doing anything is why, why, why did I say this in here? Why did I say this and not there? What, what you know, what's going on, you know, in my world that allows me to justify this action here. And then you just use your imagination for the rest of it. And anger is the first thing that, you know, people are, uh, taught to suppress, right? Acting forces you to uncover the things that you're taught to suppress the most. So during my acting training, anger came up the most because I can't be an angry black man. 
I can't I can't afford to allow my anger and my emotions to get the best of me because I'm going to I can pay the ultimate uh, price for it. Right. So I was taught to suppress that. And when acting comes up, the last thing you want to do is be nice. Even if your character is a nice person, nice isn't interesting necessarily. Yeah. So you're going to have to find a way to tweak your niceness to make it interesting. And, uh, but for evil people, it's all right there. So you could just let it fly. So I kind of took out my frustrations on my castmates, essentially. <laughs> uh, that's good. I mean, I guess you have to do that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The beautiful thing is we all love each other. So yeah. it was like, listen, I got to do this thing. You know I love you, right? Okay, cool. And then I, I beat him up or something. <laughs> the <episode. laughs> You're like, hold on. I got to kick your ass. I'll be right back. Uh, that's what yeah, we're yeah. going to do. Trust yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's funny you say that because they were talking about, I'm a huge training day fan. Uh, obviously, you can't figure it out. I love anything Denzel Washington does. I'm a huge Denzel. Listen, you and me both, brother. My goodness. I love Denzel. Right. So funny story. I saw him on Broadway once. Oh, did you? I have a Denzel story. He, yeah. he exploded onto the stage. I've, he filled the entire space with his aura, his his energy. Dude, I'm, I'm like in the rafters, and I felt like he was right in front of me. Mm. I've never, I've never felt that kind of energy before. So I'm like... I want that. Yeah. I want that. Okay. I want my version of that. That's amazing. He's yeah. so, so humble. This, so I have my story of meeting. I met the man accidentally. I was, uh, I'm from Northern California. Oh, nice. So uh, I'm from no Folsom, Cal. Folsom, California. Johnny Cash made us famous. <laughs> uh, also the nice. prison where uh, Rick James went to prison and the Menendez brothers. Yeah, if you want stupid history, oh, I'm wow. just give it to Yeah. Uh, <laughs> super freak, baby. Yay. Yes. Uh, uh, but, you know, I was, I was at a sack. This, there was one of these bad wannabe NFL football leagues going on at the time. I forget. There's been so many bad mm -hmm. wannabe leagues. But one of Denzel's sons played football. Well, plays football. Like oh, yeah, Canadian. yeah. The one who's the one yeah. who's actually a TV a movie star now. Yeah. yeah. So David, it's, right? It's funny, right? David. Yeah. So we were at this yeah. game. We were at this sac in Sacramento, and I was on the sidelines. I was visiting a friend who gave me a cool pass. It was like, oh, you can go roll by the field. Nobody cares. So I'm sitting there, I'm minding my own business, and I'm down kind of in the back of the end zone, kind of just kicking it, leaning. Mm -hmm. And I hear this guy next to me, and he's just like, hat, hoodie, just a, a dude talking to another dude. And we're just kind of sitting there, and we both have, or like this. Just, you know, here I am. Yeah. I, I think I'm fresh out of the core. Uh, just a couple years out of the core, and I'm like sitting here. And we're just bullshitting. My brain's like that voice. It's like, and I was about ready to say, dude, you know whose voice you sound like you have? I didn't need wow. to because I kind of... Walked over and I was like, "Hey, we've been chatting for a couple of minutes. What's your, you know, I'm Eric." Yeah. And Denzel turned over. He's like, "Denzel." I'm like, <gasps> "I fanboyed. I did. I'm not gonna lie. I fanboyed." I was like, you can't. Oh, I was about to say, "How could you not?" <laughs> I was like, "You're you not." <laughs> he said Denzel like you're like, like I didn't know him. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I stopped. I started pointing at imaginary people. Like he said, he said Denzel. Like I don't know who he is. Like. <laughs> He said it with that smile that Denzel had. Like, you're just like, bro, yeah. I know who you are. I'm like, like, dude. I'm like, let me tell you my story. I'm like, one of the first movies I ever watched that I can remember you in was Glory. I'm like, it's a scene that really, actually movie awakened me. Like, watching that and yeah. Mississippi Burning, two amazing movies from the 80s mm. that really touched yeah. on things I didn't know about. I, I mean, I just wasn't raised around it to know about it. It's not my parents' fault. You have to yeah. educate yourself. Knowledge is power. We've always been told that, and there's exactly. so many people out there, I think, to educate yourself. Pick up a book. Uh, turn on. I mean, Netflix has done an amazing job bringing what's currently going on in our country and bringing it forward. So you mm. see this isn't something new, yeah. that police brutality yeah. and, and hatred towards the black culture has been around for hundreds of years. This isn't new. It's it's, it's not like yeah. it just woke up. And I mean, and there's, and there's so many self-righteous people out there, you know, there's... People who, you know, I mean, even our show has been accused of no diversity. You know, you don't have diversity. I'm like, good God. Wow. Diversity, I pride win. myself in it. I'm like, yes, yes, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a white guy who hosts a show, but I'm damn well that I always have women on my show. Everybody on my production team except one person is female. I'm like, the company I co-own is co-owned by my wife. She's the CEO of the mm. damn company. Don't tell me diversity. I don't care about it. Trust me. I don't go around and bundle my friends under their color, their skin, or religion. I don't do that. But my show, I'm damn sure I give everybody a voice. And I don't care what they decide they lean politically, but we're all going to talk about fixing problems in America. If you're a race hater, you're not coming on my show. That's just not how it is. 
But, you know, I tell people, be anti-racist, because if you sit in the middle and go, well, I'm not racist, you're either, you're either racist or you're anti-racist. You can't just sit in the middle and be like, oh, I'm just going to... You can't straddle the fence. No. You know, I'm just going gonna... to... You don't get that opportunity. No, you don't no, get no. that... that you know. pick, uh, pick a side so yeah. we know who you are. Don't hide. Yeah. Uh, Hazan Mishan you know I mean? said that on his show this past Sunday. I look forward to what he says this Sunday. Yeah. He said, we sat on the sidelines for too long. People sit here and we watch. How many people went over and stopped those cops from being on George Floyd? All the people wow. filmed it. Yeah. Nobody got out of their damn car did anything. And it starts with those three officers who knew better. They were yeah, right exactly. there. They could have done something. But then it goes further to the people who stopped and watched or drove by in their cars. How many times have people done that? When you don't... Yeah. It's like Montel Williams was on our show on Tuesday. And Montel said this. Mm -hmm. He said, just like that adage that we've learned since 9-11. If you see say something, say, something, say something. something. Law yeah. enforcement does it, but it's now our job. We've got to speak up. We can no longer be afraid to go to these public servants and say, look, dude, the person's saying they can't breathe. There's other ways to restrain somebody. If you need help, call for backup, brother. I'll help you. I'll yeah. stand right here. Now how could you possibly need help when the guy's on his chest with his arms yeah, right? behind his back, handcuffed? Yeah. I've, I've, when I sleep on my chest, it's hard to breathe. Right? No one's on my back. No. You know what I mean? Like, you you guys literally justified a homicide. That's, that's it. And that's it. That's but, it. But, hey, like it's, I said, it's, it's disgusting. Just, just 24 hours ago or 48 hours ago, They've let one of those officers is walking is is out. He, he posted a million dollar bail. They all have a million dollar bail. They all have the same charges, all of them. And, and he was wow. able for some reason. But again, this goes back. Breonna Tiller's killers still roam the street. I yeah, mean, still roam. Yeah. We, we, we we live in, a, in an awkward time. But my friend Lenny, I thank you so much for you coming on the show. Hey, and I know we went really long, but this is so. It's cool. It's a conversation we have to have. I'd love to have you back on yes. whenever you have time. I know you have filming coming up. Obviously, you have a life, and you probably yes, don't sir. want to spend it being on to the point all the time. Listen, we can we can go. This I've I've been I've been needing you know this kind of conversation. These kinds of conversations need to keep happening. And as as long as uh, we can have a dialogue and we can find solutions, I'm always game because we this is a beautiful way to vent, and it's also a beautiful way to to, to challenge the ridiculous status quo. That's it's not good enough. It's nowhere near good enough. And we need more compassion to people like you doing this. So thank you. That's how we have to educate, my friend. That's why yes, I'm sir. here. That's why I want you on the show whenever you're welcome to come on. So we can have dialogue. So we can get people yeah. to go, holy shit. If they could talk about it, trust me. I'm just a simple dude. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. Uh, I'm a friend. Yes. Uh, I love You can people. do it too. Exactly. Yeah. You can do it too. It's not yeah. hard. It takes very little effort to not hate. You actually sleep really yes. well. <laughs> it's really easy. You, you know. <laughs> it's, it's not rocket science it's like people i mean it, no. it's just like hate after hate it's like you know what adds to funniness in this month is not only are we dealing with racism in our country but it's also pride month so you get the extra dial in of hate in america right like they're like yeah not only are black people angry but damn it margaret the gay people are out again and you're just like oh jesus oh you people just, you're just never gonna be happy <laughs> I got a laundry list of things to hate like what like what is you just what, where's the basis? It's like you just sit at home like what are we going to hate today? It's like dude, yeah, I don't have that just, time. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> I'm the guy who wakes up and goes, I'm gonna put a goose shirt on today. I mean, this is the shit I think about. I mean uh, anyways, my friend. Uh, yeah. we've had fun. This is fun. Uh Yes, this are. is definitely fun. So I want to thank you for coming in. Uh, people can tune in. Are your episodes streaming currently? So if they go to... Yes, the, we're halfway through the season. Uh, okay. we got 12 episodes up on BET Plus right now. Sweet. And uh, hold your horses or, or, or hold your... your what is it? What is it? What's the thing? Horses. Brace yourself. That's Brace what yourself. I'm trying to say. Because <laughs> it's a crazy show. So yeah. I can't <laughs> wait. So go out, watch it on BET. Uh, see you uh, on there. Uh, maybe we'll do a giveaway. Maybe you can sign some headshots and we'll give them away. For hey, that'd be dope. I'm you game. Oh, I'm cool. so game. I yeah. love it. See, I always come up with crazy ideas, and some people are like, no. But, dude, you're doing big things. <laughs> Listen, I'm a fan of the show. The idea, the more I'm like, let's go. The crazier the idea, the more I'm like, yeah, yeah. let's do that. I started watching this show, like, like during, honestly, during during the quarantine, it came to me as a recommendation for a friend, like, the uh -huh. second week of quarantine, because we went, I took my family to the mountains just to get away from this craziness, because it was looming too. Understandably so, yeah. And I was like, what can we watch? And I said, I want something a little different. Right? And so we suggested Ruthless, and I was like, this is dope. I liked it. And then, you know, my team was like, do you want to interview? I was like, hell yeah. Dude, you are, <laughs> you are bro. You are kind of twisted in that show. Like, I didn't know if I was yeah. going to get, like, one of my old officers from the military was going to show up and be like, this is how we're, we're going to do the interview. Like, I was like, hopefully he's not going to be in character. 
I don't want to get. That guy scares the hell out of me. He scares the hell out of me. I was like, is Lenny going to yell at me for like the whole time I interview him? No. (laughs) Thank God you're not mean like your character. But no, go check out Ruthless. It's worth it. You can see it on BET 12 episodes in. I'm telling you, you're going to get to that last episode and you're going to be like, damn it, why are there no more right now? So (laughs) that's how you get. Trust me. That's how I get. I'm like, like you start counting to the last episode, you're like, shit. Try to slow down. Maybe, maybe they'll. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> so yeah. it's good that you guys are going to start filming again. We need you to start filming. We need TV. Tell Tyler. Uh, what that? We should get Tyler on the show. Yeah, that's a, that's a big ask. Let's just, let's just get the that man. Would be on. Amazing. Yeah, we he's do he's fun too. He's fun, especially with interviews. We should, we should, he he has a ball. So we should see I'd if he'd be willing to, to help a, a lowly guy like me. Just you know, bring him on here. Tell him <laughs> we just want to talk to him. Yeah, I wouldn't minutes. put it past him. He's I, that kind of guy. I love that dude. Just everything about him. I've read so much about him. His movies cracked me up just because he just. He just has good he goes humor. In. He just does. He just goes he in. Wants. He doesn't care who he offends. And I love what you said. I mean, in closing, the biggest thing I could take away is that he loves an underdog and finding yeah. those diamonds in the rough and turning them into rock stars. Like you, my friend. You are truly one of those amazing people who you're changing the world, my friend. And, and we appreciate hey. you because we need more dialogue to be able to talk to each other because we're all human. Yeah. We all love. We all- excited for our first guest on this uh this second guest let me restart that three two one i gotta do the clapping thing restart welcome back we're excited for our final guest of this friday show uh we're gonna be talking about a lot of things tv so if you're gonna talk about tv and movies who else to then bring a movie and tv critic on your show you've seen him before on our show it's our renowned favorite it's we're gonna call him our tv critic for our show it's to the points tv critic acclaimed TV and movie critic, Mr. Mark Berman. So we're excited to have Mark on the show. So we're going to be talking about, uh, you probably heard this week that several movies have been removed from streaming and we have the new summer lineup coming up, but we're thinking about TV, right? As we get more freedoms, as now everybody in the country is basically either in a phase one or phase two of opening, we're talking about TV, right? We've been talking about TV a lot because that's what we did for eight weeks, but then the summer lineups come out which is interesting to see how those come out, kind of pan out to what fall will look like. So we have Mark here. So let's welcome Mark to the show. Mark, well, how are you doing today, bud? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm great. I always love having you on the show as our TV critic. I, I just gave you the title as To The Points TV critic. So there we go. I like it. Thank you. That's what we're doing. So, so let's jump right into this. Let's go without hesitation. We'll save the summer lineup for last, but there's been a lot going on in the TV world the last oh, week or so, uh, especially the last, this week, especially we started the week off hearing that great Academy Award winning movies such as Django and by Quentin Tarantino. And of course, a, a favorite of everybody, which I think is a, a movie you must watch just for the pure history behind it. Gone with the Wind was removed from HBO Max Tuesday morning. Uh, deemed with some of the things that it car- that it discussed yes. in there, there's racist behavior. I want your thoughts on this. Uh, we're seeing shows pulled off streaming. I mean, I'm shocked Tarantino's lineup has been removed. Quentin, to me, number one, he's my favorite actor. Uh, not favorite actor, but favorite directors. Uh, I just love his movies. They're very cutting edge. He, he, his The way he thinks and films things is amazing. I mean, Quentin kind of, I, I think when I think of diversity, I think of Quentin Tarantino. The roles that he equips everybody with are second to none. And to see his movies take it off, and I mean, Django, okay, I kind of will give it to that because of the use of the N-word in it. But the F-word used, well, anything with Samuel L. Jackson has the F-word used a lot. But, you know, you look at that movie, and I, I look at it as like a history lesson of where we came from as something bad. And to remove these movies that aren't poking fun on it and not like, it's not like you're going to expecting Leonardo DiCaprio to go out and burn crosses, right? That's not what <clears throat> my belief is. But I love you, somebody who's a critic of all this. What is going on in this this landscape of taking everything off streaming now that is kind of offensive to somebody? You know, obviously there's a lot, you know, in the racial climate today, there's a lot going on. And there are, are a lot of course of history, both in cinema and on television that um, it's just not been appropriate. I mean, this goes back to, I remember even as a kid, um, hearing that there were some, if you remember the old Our Gang shorts that aired in theaters 
from the 20s to the 40s. I mean, there were a few of those as well that way back when were being taken off. And I don't think, uh, in my opinion, you know, something like Gone with the Wind, that was 1939. And we're changing. Our world is changing. It's very important to change. It's very important to be diversified. It's very important that people get treated equally. But I don't think taking a movie off like Gone with the Wind is going to change anything. I, if anything, I think people need to see things like this. They what it was and we have to work on making it better or making it what it should be so i think taking various things off and not showing them now i don't think that's really necessarily the right thing to do there are some exceptions of course but i think we as a society need to understand we need to you know not hide from what has happened we have to face it we have to correct it and i don't think taking something off like all of the wind is going to do that i think we need to see it so i don't totally agree with this but i certainly you know do understand and, you know, some things should be taken off, but not everything, because at some point we're going to lose so much of the content. And like, as I said, we need to learn from this. We need to change this, not hide from it. That's my opinion. Uh, I, that, that's a great take. Uh, and, and I couldn't agree with you more. This is where we're at. We need to learn from some of this. Now, on the other hand, I totally yes. agree with renaming all the military, our army bases, by the way, as a Marine, none of our bases are named after Confederate generals. Yay. Uh, we always name ours after dead Marines. That's just what we've always done. That's how we honor our Marines. Uh, the army yeah. has gotten better at that, but I know that's going around. I think there's a big jump for taking somebody, a movie off about Gone, Gone with the Wind, which to me is a history lesson in a movie. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there's a there's a learning curve in there that you learn a lot. Now, naming a base after some general who lost in a war. That's just dumb. Uh, I agree. I'm glad that they're going to change that. But Gone with the Wind, I don't agree with. I, there's a fine line with Tarantino movies. But what's next? Are we going to take off uh, Red Dawn, the original Red Dawn, not the remake, yeah. which wasn't as good. Uh, the first Red Dawn, that could offend people because there's Cubans in there and the Russians, again. Uh, I mean, uh, I just think there's a fine line that we're going here. I mean, it, but is the Epstein going to get removed, the filthy rich? I know it's kind of a weird segue to it, but there's such a fine line of what's offensive and what's not, what's not offensive. You know, something like the Jeffrey Epstein docuseries, I've written about it. Uh, you know, it was four, four, four hour episodes. I sat and watched it. Basically, we sat for four straight hours. It was very, very hard to watch. It was very difficult to see what he did to these young girls. Horrible, terrible. But it doesn't mean that we shouldn't, you know, see this and understand this and, and make sure that this never happens again. And I think to hide from it is not the way to approach it. I think we have to face what's happened in the past and we have to work on the future. And, you know, as you mentioned, the Jeffrey Epstein docuseries, again, I started watching it and I was completely hooked on it, not because I thought it was something enjoyable. I thought it was something that really was, was important to learn from and make sure this never happens again. So let's not hide from our past and let's fix the future. That's my opinion. That's what we should do. Absolutely. We, we need to. We need to learn from our past. We talk yeah. about history lessons. I know in the military, we learn a lot from our past mistakes. I'm laughing and, and somebody called me out earlier. I made that same exact comment and they're like, brother, you're wearing a goose t-shirt on your today. And I'm like, goose gave his life for our country. It's not his fault that his seat ejected into the canopy. <sighs> See, we learned from that. By the way, that's a true thing. That was a problem with the F-14 Tomcat, that that's why the new fighters that have come out since, they don't have that problem. It blows back. It doesn't go straight out. See? We learn. We uh, learn. We but, change. We, we change. Learn, we learn. But it, it, let, let's talk about this. Filthy Rich, the Epstein documentary on Netflix, kind of caught a lot of people off guard yeah. uh, as it came out. I, I mean, obviously, like, Netflix can't plan everything perfect. I think where they did win was Space Force coming out with SpaceX launching. Right. That was perfect for it to come out on Friday and Saturday. The launch goes up. Uh, we'll, we'll get to Space Force in a minute. I want your feelings on it because I'm a huge fan of it. I know that there's been mixed reactions to it. But the filthy rich, it comes out. Uh, people start watching it. It is It suckers you in. And it's not because of what the content's about. It's we've never really been given the true Jeffrey Epstein story by yeah. anyone. It's always it's very newsworthy. You know, the news slants it depending on their story. But to have this was straight down the middle, in my eyes, was quality reporting, great journalism. And, and to expose, I mean, I totally understand. The dude being dead is probably the best thing that could have ever happened to that guy uh, in his life. But what a cretin. And showing that, I mean, there's a lot of people, again, it brings us back to go, 
who do you believe in Washington DC when you watch that and you're like, uh, he was basically hanging out with everybody, uh, buddy, buddy, wherever he could be and hiding his tracks wherever he went. And he was the ultimate guy. But let me ask you, there's one part of the series that made my wife and I look at each other. There was an older gentleman. It was a CEO of a company that ran the Ponzi scheme with him. And the way that that older gentleman said that he ran a mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar Ponzi scheme and he said it so smugly with the leg cross and like, yep, we ran a Ponzi scheme together. Uh, yeah, we made like yeah. a 14 million in a day. We were like, he just said that so nonchalantly, like, hey, I stole money from people. Hey. You know what? <laughs> Go ahead. You know what? Unfortunately, we, we live in a world where if you have money and you have power like that, you can get away with a lot of things. You know, finally he got caught. Finally, you know. Um, he was taken to task for all his behavior, but you know we have to learn from this. And 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 again, I sat and watched him. My wife and I started watching. We were completely addicted to it, not because you know, oh, this is great, but it's important to watch. I think if anything, we have to learn from what he did. We can never let this happen again. You know, these poor girls, and they were so brave to step forward. And I don't think this is the last we've heard of this. I think we'll be seeing more on you know, the aftermath of this and um, given how well it's doing right now on Netflix. But again, it, it's something in our society that must be corrected. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much power you have. And then, you know, what really struck me about it when I really got to the, you know, the when they were on his private island and you know, Prince Andrew was there and, and this one and that one. And I'm like, you know what? We have to stop this. We can't let this happen. So I think it's it's something that people should watch. I think it's it's something, you know, you're going to get invested in. And we have to learn from this. It's We have to change this. We can't let this happen again. But wow, he got away with stuff. Totally, man. And this Ooh, is probably uh, the biggest thing right now. On that and uh, one thing I have loved about Netflix, and, and let's talk about TV and smart programming. Netflix has been... Talk about a, a, a company that knows their audience well. When coronavirus first broke out and we were stuck in our homes, the first weekend of that was like March 13th, the weekend of March 13th or thereabouts. They dropped Outbreak on that Monday morning as a streaming service, right? So everybody's like watching that. Then Contagion came out and several other movies. And then you watch as we got, we've gone through the pandemic and now we've moved to these riots and, and the Black Lives Matters movement, which is outstanding the series that they put on and we got addicted to watching the robert f kennedy documentary which totally blew has blown yeah. my mind obviously i was not alive during uh, rfk's time nor his brother uh huge history buff huge fan of the kennedy family and what jfk both of them are veterans so they did an amazing thing serving in world war ii greatest generation ever but to see how they were leading the way in civil rights if you think about it you know seeing it's just amazing to watch it it's like does netflix just know i mean they must have one hell of an algorithm to put out great content that kind of fills in when the when we need to watch it because it's eye opening and you sit down and then you add into their great series that they have with Hazan Majan, who's one of my favorite comedians. His show every Sunday, he released uh, his uh, a twenty minute rant that to me we actually sat our kids down and said, okay, plug your ears for the profanity, but you need to hear what this man's talking about and see where he's at. Netflix is winning when it comes to educating and keeping us entertained at the same time. Well, a lot of other people have missed the boat, kind of like how Skype missed the boat with streaming conferences and Zoom kicked their teeth in and Skype had a 17 year head start and Zoom to one. So it's, you know, what's your thoughts on, how do you see Netflix, number one, how do they do this? This is like TV magic that they seem to always have the right content readily available. And where do you see Netflix going? And is there anybody who can actually compete with them with content like we're seeing? You know, what Netflix did from the get-go was they were spending a lot of money. They had unlimited pockets. They were investing in a ton of programming, and they still are. Now, the advantage uh, a streamer has like Netflix, or any of them actually, is there really are no boundaries. You could do whatever you want. You know, you're not tied to uh, a half-hour format or, you know, a one-hour dramatic format. You can do and say whatever you want. There's really no boundaries, so that's a real advantage. And it kind of reminds me 
uh, way back when, when cable kind of arose and you had a, an outlook like HBO, which was doing things that a broadcast network couldn't do. And then you started seeing places pop up like AMC and FX, and they really made names for themselves. Now we're focused heavily on the streaming wars, and Netflix is well above anybody else. You know, Disney Plus roared into the game. Hulu, you have Amazon, they all have advantages. But the thing Netflix did was it never stopped investing. It never stopped, you know, and they go to other countries, they pick up shows that are, you know, worth seeing. You know, they invest in things that, you know, whoever is doing this, whoever is choosing this, they're picking things that the general public is interested in seeing. So we're all programmed at present and in the future to know that when we want to watch something, we're going to go right to Netflix. That's what I always do. That's what we do here when we're sitting what is the next show for us to watch and right now i am completely invested in dead to me on netflix we i just started watching it actually this past mm -hmm. weekend i've gotten through six episodes so i know that if i want to see something worth seeing on uh, my my first choice is netflix and then of course i'll check out other streamers i'll check out you know the cable nets the broadcast nets but and netflix is the go-to source and again they spend money they're not afraid and there's no boundaries and it all works. That is true. It works. You know, yeah. not everything is successful, but it's got a great reputation. Yeah, I mean, you they know? hit the ball really the good. Ball making with making of a murderer, right? I think that's the big one that we all think about as we we think of streaming TV and Netflix. Really, that's where it drove the first real addiction to reality. I don't know, if that's reality TV, but these docu series. Making a murder captivated an audience that we have never seen anywhere else because you can watch the other great streaming services that have those, you know, those Friday night pro murder mystery shows that we've all grown up watching. You know, CBS has them, NBC has them. You know, we can watch the datelines in the 48 hours and be intrigued. But to have a series go where it's unedited and you're seeing the whole ball bouncing movement that way, it's amazing to watch streaming TV really take over. So, so let's kind of jump into streaming services. Uh, you see more and more people cutting the cord and more and more streaming services leading the way and streaming directly to our houses. I mean, if you look at it and you, you brought up Disney Plus, uh, come on, Mandalorian was something that jumped out and people can't wait for Mandalorian to come back out the second season. Uh, I mean, that's available nowhere. A lot of people who don't have Disney Plus have no idea. Well, we all geek out about Baby Yoda. They have no idea that we fell in love with a little tiny green guy. I mean, I don't even care about the plot of that show as long as I get to see Baby Yoda for 45 minutes. That's all I really care about is I want to know what Baby Yoda is going to do. <laughs> that doesn't have any lines. But where do you see streaming services going? I mean, will we become an era where we no longer have traditional cable? I mean, is that where we're going to head? No. Okay. No, no, that's not going to happen. You know, um, and not everybody agrees with me on that. But let me let me be very honest here. You know, a lot of there are a lot of individuals in our business that are predicting that the linear platform is going to ultimately evaporate. Streaming, that's not going to happen because again, you know, and I've said this many times. And, and here's here's a perfect example. Let's say hopefully we'll have a Super Bowl next year, and let's say the Super Bowl was on streaming and not on a broadcast network, you're not gonna get 100 million viewers. You're not gonna get that. You know, we don't really know what the audience data is on the streamers because they don't release it. You know, we have to go with what we've heard and, you know, and, and the critical acclaim of certain things. But I mean, the biggest bang for your buck to get the most eyeballs is still a linear platform. It's still a broadcast network. It's still a cable network. That's not to say that streaming is not growing in leaps and bounds. It is tremendously. So I think we are in a business that everybody kind of has to have a, a certain piece of the pie. And if you're a broadcast network, network like NBC. You have your linear platform. Now you have Peacock. ABC has Disney Plus. CBS has CBS All Access. So when you program something, you kind of have to do it multi-level. And But no, I do not see linear ending anytime soon. I don't think that's going to happen in the future. Uh, but yes, streaming is, is growing in leaps and bounds. But um, I think it's an enhancement to our business, not a replacement for broadcast or cable. I think everybody could coexist, but I do think at some point the cap has to, you know, there has to be an end to, you know, every other week another streamer coming out. You know, it's sort of like <laughs> the cable. It's we yeah. had every week another one, another one, another one. So I think that at some point has to slow down, and it will, and it will. 
And now, of course, you know, we're in a pandemic, hopefully getting out of this pandemic. So this is such an important time for original content because we, we want to watch something. We need to be occupied. It's very hard, you know. That's oh, God, yeah. So, I mean, let, let's talk about that. So we have the summer schedule coming up. Yes. Uh, what do we have? Do we? I mean, give us some good. We need good news. We we want to know there's there's some good things out there to watch. We've talked about Filthy Rich, obviously, uh, yeah. that you know that kind of jumped out. But what's out there? Let's talk about something positive. We we beat the drum on all the bad things. Yeah. Uh, you notice I didn't bother to ask you why you think cops and live, whatever the other one was, uh, live PD or whatever it was, they both got canceled. I think that's self-explanatory. I, I saw just on a side right. note, I saw the founder of live T live PD. He was just angry online. And I'm like, dude, you just, it just came out that they videotaped somebody dying on your show being tased and they've got all the dirt on the, I'm like, that's why your show got taken off the air. Come on. And you hit it. See, and that's what I think. That's, that's where I think, you know, I know cops was officially canceled. Um, mm -hmm. Was live PD pulled? I'm not sure yet. Yep. Yesterday I, it was officially, good. they well, suspended, you know they put it in hiatus on Tuesday. And after the video evidence came out from a backup camera, mm -hmm. they officially said, we're done. The show's kaput. See, so. right decision. That, is, that is the right decision. We don't need to see a show like Cops anymore. It, was, it ran on Fox for 25 years. I always <laughs> felt it was very slanted towards the police officer. And good, we don't need stuff like that. That doesn't help us. We don't need to see that anymore. So that I agree with. But I, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll begin with my summer preview with a show that I've been watching for 20 years, <laughs> you know, and we're, there's so many of us that are kind of like, is it going to get on the air again? Big Brother on CBS. You know, I, years ago, somebody actually tweeted and said, I'm too old to be watching Big Brother. I'm sorry, I like it. You know, it's an addiction. And of course, if they do it, it's gonna, be ha it's gonna have to be done differently. But I predict, I predict we will see Big Brother again. Um, I'm guessing probably in late July, and the thing about a show like Big Brother is it runs three times a week, and CBS is really going to need it in the fall. So if they start it late in the middle of the summer, they, it could bleed into October, and it gives them three hours. So my prediction about Big Brother is at a later time this year. The big show this summer, again, once again, is America's Got Talent. And I think Sofia Vergara, by the way, is an exceptional addition to that show. And, of course, they're also, you know, America's Got Talent also has its controversy right now with what's going on with the lawsuit against them. But from a from an entertainment standpoint right now, it's still the go-to show on the broadcast networks this summer. But there's a lot of stuff coming out on, on, on the streamers. And I'm gonna give you a preview, but I'm gonna I have a cheat sheet, so I'm gonna put my glasses on. There you go, because I can't see without glasses. I can't see anything. I'm gonna run through a list of some shows I think you you know are worth seeing. Uh, we have a new season coming up or on the air of Raimi on Hulu. Um, which is a really stellar show. It's kind of like a dramedy, um, and I think it's worth watching. You mentioned Space Force with Steve Carell. Um, personally, my my, you know, I don't love it. It's I don't think it's really for me. But I think a lot of people are watching. A lot of people are talking about it. And Steve Carell is a big name. The Office in Space, something like that. Um, there's yeah. a new season of Dear John on USA, the Betty Broderick story which is getting a lot of thumbs up. We have our final season of 13 seasons, why, 13 reasons, not seasons, why on Netflix. <laughs> we have a new docu-series on Netflix called Lennox Hill, which follows life at the renowned hospital. We have a new season of Drama the Politician on Netflix. Here's interesting. We have a revival of Perry Mason. The original Perry Mason ran on CBS for eight seasons. It was revived once before. It's back. Matthew Reese is Perry Mason. We know Matthew Reese from The Americans. We have Solar Opposites on Netflix, which is an animated series. A new season of Snowpiercer on TNT. We have The Babysitter's Club on Netflix, which is kind of the tale of some teenage girls that start a babysitting club. And you notice that a lot of these shows are Netflix. That's just how it is. <laughs> and then this is interesting. Coming up in August, Brave New World, which is an adaptation of the famous book on Peacock. So those are some examples of things that you may want to watch this summer. There really is not all that much on the broadcast networks other than, you know, America's Got Talent. ABC's doing a clips version of The Bachelor that completely fizzled. 
<laughs> I don't think anyone's going to watch that or very few people. So it's back to Netflix and, and a lot of, you know, Netflix again. Yep. So, so let's, so let's well, talk real fast. So, so I mean, th yeah. those are great. I mean, obviously Netflix again, we, we, I'm glad we should just solve it. We're going to talk about Netflix. Uh, that this episode should be called, uh, how great is Netflix? Uh, but it is, I mean, Netflix is, is killing it. And it's funny when we watch old rerun and, and we do this nightly, we watch at least four to five episodes of the office. It's our background noises as, as the four of us, I have teenagers. Yes. So we sit around and we love the office. I mean, we quote way too many lines of the show. Both my kids have some sort of office tchotchke in their room. My son has, that's what she said in his room, which is interesting that a 13 year old has that. But I mean, we watch these shows, but it's funny to watch my kids hear Mindy Kaling's character on the show talk about ordering Netflix movies and having them shipped to her house. Because they don't remember that. They don't recall Netflix was originally, you had to go and pick one and one would come and you'd be like, I didn't want this one. And, or maybe you rented it somewhere else. Uh, but I think something else that's interesting with summer TV that we've never had before is we're now taking, the sports world is jumping into it and you're going to have sports in mixed into the summer and not the Olympics, which scheduled it's now next summer. But now you're going to have the NBA, and ma at least Major League Soccer, uh, Major League Baseball is claiming that they're going to have a season and start it, but those guys can't stop arguing about money. And then you have the NHL. And then, of course, your normal fall sports start back, which is the NFL, the monster in the room that makes CBS all of its money in the fall, uh, besides their, you know, however many more episodes they could do of NCIS or anything else that they come up with that's military related. CBS is always good with that. So, I mean, where do you see. It's true. Don't they? Come on. I have like 10 friends that are veterans and they're actors on one of those shows. It's it's like everybody. It's like CBS. It's like making movies, uh, TV shows about the military. They I'll do a good end. job. I'm not knocking them. Yeah, they're good. Never uh, but, but where do you see it? Where do you see this? I mean, how will the sports, since this is a, a new world, right? Usually we have sports kind of broken down where you get used to the NFL and programming doesn't have to work around that. So it doesn't affect streaming because streaming you can watch whenever, but networks have to be worried as now you're going to be competing with TNT because now we have this tournament. I mean, granted, the tournament for the NBA is only, well, it'll go until October. So that's at least five weeks of the NFL on top of that. So I'm always thinking, I figure you're a TV. What's your thoughts on that? Kind of the two worlds slamming into each other because they're going to they're gonna crash into each other. They're going to affect somebody's viewer time. How do how do the networks even plan to survive on that? Because streaming will be fine because you can watch it after your sports are over, but you can't do that with your normal TV shows if you are watching Survivor or whatever ABC tries to. I mean, ABC as of this minute doesn't have a Monday night anchors for Monday Night Football. They terminated both the relationships with the folks that were doing it last year. So it, it's an interesting realm as we move into the fall, where TV is going to have a lot of sports on top of it. You know, I'll tell you. Sports, um, sports, you might hear some thunder, it's thundering here right now. Um, sports over the years, you know, one thing that has not changed is the importance and the value of sports, you know, over the years with cable arising and the streamers arising, the broadcast networks have seen their ratings go down and down and down. And that's a battle they continue to fight. But the one thing is sports has been con amazingly consistent over the years. It's an enormous attraction for so many different people. So this summer is going to be very different. I mean, you know, one thing that's always very big in the summer is baseball. We don't have a baseball season. Are we going to have one? I don't know. It doesn't look like it at this point. And little by little, we'll start seeing sports trick, you know, trickle back in. It's extremely valuable to any outlet that has it because when you have sports, automatically you're going to see a rise in your numbers. You know, you have like an outlet like Fox that was running, you know, or NBC and CBS were sharing Thursday night football. Then that went to Fox. And right away you get an overall tweak in your numbers for the week. It's always a very big thing. So sports is absolutely enormous. And the good thing about it is, it's more popular than ever before. And I think now, if anything, we're going to be so hungry for sports to see the competitions again that I think it's going to come back and it's going to roar back. And whoever has, you know, the rights to various things are going to benefit by it. So sports is enormous. It's a very, you know, it, it just that's yeah. one the one thing that hasn't changed over the years is the appeal of sports. So it's very valuable to any outlet that has it, whether you're a broadcast network, cable, 
a streamer, anybody, it's extremely valuable. Oh, I mean, we think we saw that. A perfect example is you watched ESPN, again, smart, partnered with Netflix, geniuses, uh, right. partnered with Netflix and released The Last Dance, the great 10 series. I mean, come on, they drug out two episodes. They could, I mean, if we would have not known we're not getting sports back until July, they should have done one episode a week for 10 weeks instead of five weeks with two. Uh, but I mean, just so well done. Everybody's talking about the music, the characters. It's funny how people are remembering Dennis Rodman and how you know entertaining Rodman was. But I mean, you look at that and ESPN killed it with that. That's oh. been their bread and butter was last, last Dance. But then they released another docuseries on Lance Armstrong. It hasn't performed as well. It's also not going straight to Netflix like Last Dance did. And ESPN, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, mm -hmm. but let's touch on it before you go. I'm a huge Peloton fan. And I've noticed ESPN and Peloton are, they're finding ways to get us to watch TV and work out. I did a workout with pro athletes Why ESPN filmed it, which was pretty cool because they did it with Last Dance was the final, right before the final episode, ESPN did this big thing. 22,000 people rode together live with Alex Trezant great dude, all Jordaned up. But then you, they did it just two weeks ago. They did this all-star because a lot of athletes have been using Peloton. I mean, this is pretty smart. They're combining stuff. To me, it's almost like a commercial that people don't get. I mean, as a Peloton user, I'm like, but then there's a moment where my wife's like, did anybody bother noticing that that's a total commercial to go buy Peloton? Like in a heartbeat, that's where you should be. And by the way, wear Nike because that's what everybody's wearing. So, I mean, do you see TV doing more of this? I mean, Marketing. are they just Marketing. desperate for content? I mean, is that what this is or or is it just we need content? So let's go, A, instead of a squirrel skiing, let's put people on stationary bikes and we'll cheer for them for an hour. So it's well, you know what I, think, living, I right? think it's a combination. Of, it's a combination of both, actually. I mean, I think definitely, yeah, we're definitely uh, hungry for content right now. We are really, really. We want to watch original content, and and sports is so appealing to us, and I think it's such a it's of such great value to us that um, I think so. I do think it's a combination of both. But again, yeah. once sports comes back, and I already foresee next summer, we have when we when we have the long awaited Summer Olympics. I mean, that's <laughs> going to be enor absolutely enormous, bigger than it would have been the summer because we're all so hungry for this stuff now. But yeah, everyone's hungry. Everyone's hungry for content, and I and, and you know I I think I said this last time. I don't believe for one second that we're going to have a, a, a real full TV season. I don't think it's going to be ready in time. So I think there's going to be a lot of uh, things coming on to fill up hours and, you know, take up the slack and, and that way. So it's going to be a very different environment. It's going to be very different. But uh, sports is, it's bigger than it ever was. And when it comes back in full force, it's going to be enormous, enormous. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense. I want to thank you for coming on uh, and updating us on the summer schedule and giving your feedback because you're my go-to when it comes to what's going on in the TV world. And it's so interesting waking up and, and reading in variety that they're taking shows off the air. I mean, I knew you and I would be aligned on Gone with the Wind was a very odd choice to remove. I knew we would be also aligned that cops and this live PD, they needed to go long. I've always thought cops was staged. I agree. I mean, I'll I have me, friends that patrolled with them that would agree that it's pretty staged. And let, me, let, me, let me leave you with an interesting tidbit, because I love TV mm -hmm. tidbits. This is really a movie tidbit. Speaking of Gone with the Wind, Olivia de Havilland, who played Melanie in 1939, is turning on July 1st, 104. <laughs> She's 100, going to wow. be 104 years old. And, and she seems to still be totally with it. She recently sued FX over that um, limited series they did that her, you know, her character, her, she was part of, you know, somebody played her. So I mm -hmm. think she's still with it. She's going to be 104. How do you like that? <laughs> somebody needs to interview her how she feels about this being pulled off after everything. Did. Somebody, did, did, somebody did talk about it. I forget who it was. I'll, I'll try to give them credit uh, whenever I find out what it is. But I heard the funniest thing. They're like, it's funny they're pulling that particular movie off, right? Because that movie was never removed from movie theaters and it was broadcast no. in the 50s and the 60s. Again, no. it's never been removed from TV till now. And the civil, and I hate to say this, but the civil rights movements that we saw with Dr. King and Malcolm X and what the Kennedy, what RFK was doing and, and Lyndon Johnson together.
with trying to make the civil rights movement go, the violence, the deaths that we saw during that time. God with the wind was, nobody was like, we should take that off because people are angry. It's just weird that that would be the thing that they choose to take off of out of all the other movies where there's, mm -hmm. I mean, I almost told somebody, well, I can understand taking American History X off, right? I mean, come on, that movie is just gorily violent uh, of, of racism. Okay, take that movie off. Uh, when I saw cops removed, I mean, I didn't even know it was still on the air. So that kind of goes with how much I don't watch it anymore. I mean, I used to watch it because it was always on, right? It's what you turned on when you were in a break room when I was younger, it, it was just on. It's you know it's like Judge Judy, just always gonna be on your TV. But now it's not. Now we can put Andy Griffith on, but then I'm sure they'll probably somebody will want to remove that because uh, you know we can't what? remove Andy Griffith. Let's not let's not hide from the past and let's fix the future. And let's learn from mistakes made in the past and let's make it a better world. That's what we all need to do. And I'm confident things are going to change. I really am. I really am. This was a wake-up call. What's going on in our world? It's a wake-up call. Everyone is equal, and let's be treated like that. All of us. We're, we all should. We're, we should live in unison, not against each other. And that's enough of my preaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it though. I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Uh, I mean, that's what we need to do. We, we need to learn from our past, and people need to know that we still shouldn't remake good movies. Footloose never yeah. need to be remade, and same with Red Dawn. They should have never touched either of those movies. They were both great. The originals. Even my kids agree. My kids agree. I mean, if I you're going to remake something, you know, do do the Freddie Mercury movie like they did. I mean, that was great. You know, let's, uh, you stop know, the, let's stop with all the remakes and let's let's. That's why look Netflix original. Mo, well, you know, most of. I mean, they have Fuller House, okay, but yeah. they're original and that's what works. So let's focus on originality, not remakes. Yes, amen. I'm all for it. Or amen. make another make right. another version of that. But I want to thank you for coming on, my friend. My uh, always love. We'll have you back on in a few short weeks to give us another TV update because I'm sure we'll be talking about, and we always love your picks. So before you go, give us your top three picks that we should be watching right now on Netflix. Oh my God, you gotta watch, you have to, well, Jeff, the, Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich, Jeffrey Epstein. Yes, without a doubt. I'm dead to me, it's addictive. Oh my God, I can't believe it took me this long to find it. It's in, I, and the good news is you have two seasons and 20 episodes of it. So, you know, we already got, pay, we're through six episodes, we still have 14. And I said, I've said this the last two times, I'll say it again, Unorthodox, four episodes, it's only four hours, but it's must see drama. And I hope that, I hope we'll see another season of it. I think there's so much, so those are my three picks, and and they're all net. And Netflix is the is the go to place right now. It is awesome. It is well. There you go. We 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 never go without your three picks. We always you're always on the money with your picks. So we'll continue doing it. So uh, we're, we're gonna make you like a what is it? Uh, what's his name? That's on the Fox Football. Uh, ah, he does all the voice impressions. His name is totally out of there. Guy does the Madden. He do, uh, copies everybody. Anyway, Frank Calilindo. There you go. You can oh. be our Frank with your okay. picks. We're gonna go. We're gonna Mark's picks. Uh, but thanks, buddy. I want, can't wait to have My you pleasure. back on. Enjoy your weekend, and thank you so much for joining us today. You too. Take care. Thanks. And that was a great interview. Hopefully you learned some stuff. Love your feedback on what you think of the shows we talked about. Uh, as everybody knows, it's important to have those shows uh, that we're watching. But I would really love to talk to folks about the shows that we talked about that have been removed from TV. Now, as we talked about, we talked about cops and Live Nation or Live PD being removed. And part of that is because in the news, we've learned that Live PD filmed a black man being killed by the police, saying, I can't breathe, tased. Officers are on film saying derogatory things. Again, this was held, this was filmed in 2019, but not released to us till June of 2020. It's no surprise shows like this are given up. Again, it shows the fact that we're ignoring race in our country, and we always have. We need to do better. That's why we even talked about it on this show. That's been our subject matter, and this show will continue to do it because we're not gonna sleep on it and move to the next news story, like so many of our friends do in mainstream media. They spend the time ignoring the story and let it pass, let it die, and move on to the next. That's not how we can handle this. We've handled this time and time again this way, ignoring the issues. If you look at the civil rights movements, that's in the 60s, that's what we're dealing with right now. The difference is, is more people are speaking out. That's what we need to do. 
like I've said on this show all this week, our job is to be anti-racist and stand there with our brothers and sisters and be a voice and be heard because that's how we truly make a difference in America. Now, that's our show for the week. As always, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. It's been a strong, powerful week. Please go back and check our shows. If you missed Monday with Eddie Clark, a retired police officer, talking about his thoughts on what's going on. On Tuesday, we had Montel Williams. Thursday, had an amazing show with a cop singing. So if you want to listen to a retired Air Force and cop sing, it was pretty entertaining. And then today, an amazing show. This is what we're going to bring you, content every week that's going to talk about events that are going on in our world. So that's what we have for you. So hopefully you enjoyed this week's programming on behalf of our entire team here at To The Point. We want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking our page. Please share it with a friend so more people can hear what we're doing here on this program. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, simply send us an email at hello at tothepointtv.com. And a member of our team will go through the process and put you on our show. We want to hear you. If you'd like to come on and state your opinion, if it differs from something that we're sharing, we want to hear from you. Also, keep those comments coming in and those likes and those hearts. We appreciate you. So again, on behalf of our team, we're very thankful that you tuned in this week. And as you guys know, I'm Eric Mitchell. Be safe, be smart, be strong, and God bless America. <laughs>